contains around five items that have been abandoned by different customers throughout the day. So what Tiago needs to do first is to carry the tray. In order to, Tiago is, this, is, a, is, a, is a very good robot, but as of now, we need to put some attachment to it so it can, it can carry the tray. Um, Tiago would know that the tray is there uh, by looking at uh, the items. And if it detects that there are items there, say, oh, I have something on my belly. I should go and return them to the shelves. Now, as Tiago moves along, it will plan on where to put the items. The convenience store is pre-mapped. So Tiago knows where the shelves are and what items are on the shelves. And based on this information, Tiago would then uh, pick from its tray and put on the proper location the shelf. <clears throat> In this case, our tray has two Lipton tea boxes, one Coke can, one Lux soap, and one Darley toothpaste. So as of this point, Tiago is now in front of the shelves, and it knows that all the items that on its tray has to be put in one of the shelves. It will scan and get, so access the vision system, the vision module of the robot, and then see, OK, which one should I put first? Everything is running? <laughs> Tiago can get overwhelmed when it gets shy. So <laughs> let's give him a hand. Thank you very much. Um, Is there anything? Okay. Um, in order for Tiago to determine that how to pick the items, it needs to compute its kinematics. Sometimes, based on the uh, return value of the vision module, the item is determined not to be reachable. So, hoping that it can pick the other items, but the other items are also unreachable. It may get into this kind of infinite loop. So one way to avoid that is to jiggle the tray a bit, and then it can find its way. In a real life application, normally your robot has enough reachability to be able to not encounter this kind of unreachable spaces. So in this case, um, when the items are reachable, then it will pick the item and put it on the shelf. It's kind of hard. Those who have worked with Tiago understand that there's a little bit of a challenge for to, to, to do this precisely. So we tried our best. So we gave him all the space in the shelf. <laughs> he can put it anywhere. So thank you, Tiago. So there's another box of Lipton. <laughs> Um, our system uses, relies heavily on AI to determine the object identity as well as the pose of the object. So these two are necessary information to be able to do the picking properly. In some other implementation of our picking solutions, which we have done for some other competitions and in some works in the lab, uh, we combine model-based and uh, AI-based solution. But for this one, we are tempting fate and say, let's rely on AI solely. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so in this case, because of maybe lighting condition or something, um, Tiago tried to pick something in the middle of the air because the, the probable explanation is your PCL data has a spike and it determines that it's somewhere in the middle of the air, so you grab something there. But we have an error recovery, and Tiago knows that, hey, I'm picking something that's not there, so it will check again and try to pick the right item. Which I think it has found now. If you would look at the monitor, you'll see at the upper left corner, there is a bounding box on the yellow box. So that means it has found the other box of Lipton key, and the green arrow tells Tiago how to approach that item. Mm. 
Then he will pick it now. There you go. Okay, let's give Tiago another hand. Thank you very much. This is like watching golf. Every time you hit the ball, you clap. There are three more items, and based on our shelf arrangement, thank you, thank you. <laughs> based on our shelf arrangement, that should be the Darley next, because that's right beside Tiago, or the Coke, whichever of the two. Anyway, both shelves are reachable at this uh, position of Tiago. So I decided to pick what? Darley, the toothpaste, I think. So this is one of the reasons why we want robots to do this kind of tasks. Because it's repetitive, it's boring, and it takes some time. <laughs> yeah? Ah, sorry, decided to pick the Coke after all. These Cokes are empty because we have managed to break all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but we managed to keep the tab because Tiago keep puncturing the aluminum. I'm not blaming you guys. There you go, thank you very much. Three out of five, two more. So to do the identification, we use YOLO, just in case you're interested, um, and fed the around 15,000, 15,500 images of multiple objects inside the same image. So we had to label it. So roughly around 15,000 plus items, because in one image that we have 10 plus items actually. So to train it, to do the identification, so we can identify without marker. We're not using a model-based uh, approach here. So now it's looking for the other item. So Tiago knows he has a database of items and what are on the, what's on the tray, what's on the shelves. So he's trying to find out which one is closest. This one, it should be the Darling toothpaste, uh, which it found. Thankfully, it's a toothpaste, not a living thing. <laughs> that really sounds painful. Um, so there, um, Jago would now put it onto the shelf. Again, a very boring task that has to be automated. Uh, sorry, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> So there's one more item which is on this shelf. So Tiago will now navigate the rest of the of our one North convenience store to bring the soap to its uh, location. If you notice, we cover the uh, bottom part of the shelves with um, fake items, cola, Thai, barilla, pasta, uh, for the sake of the laser navigation. Otherwise, it might find it difficult to, uh, it might find, it might not find the shelves themselves. Itself. So again, it's looking at the item, determining how to approach it, after identification, it will determine the right approach. It has determined it can pick it and then it will go there. But it's taking in some time to compute how to pick it. Switchable. Are there the other figures that it's reachable? So Or not. Uh, 
Because we need to <clears throat> move it a bit because it's outside of the range of the reach, uh, reachability of the gripper. So this is an interesting challenge for every hardware that you work with. You have to be able to take into consideration this kind of problems. So you still found the item. You still de determine how to approach it, but the question again is, can it reach it? So in the state machine now, it's saying, okay, let's pick it. And he will attempt to do it. There you go. He picks the soap. Hopefully, you can put it on the shelf properly. So we have already taken out four out of five. Let's see if we can complete the task. Don't hit the shelf, Tiago. That hurt. OK. Good. There you go. Five out of five. Thank you very much. <laughs>